The musicians and actors of the Music with Meaning show present children's musical dramas for broadcast. <laughs> presents The Rose. I dreamt we were living on a farm, sort of like a ranch. I was walking across one of the fields. No, I never like to walk on the road. When I noticed this beautiful rose bush growing right alongside the road. On the bush, there was this lovely rose overhanging the road, besides a few other rosebuds. But this one had a beautiful red and yellow blossom, mostly yellow. It was right on the end of the limb over the busy road, and it was getting all dusty and dirty from the passing cars. The bush was growing in the ditch, and I thought, I better go down there and pick that beautiful rose and take it home, or one of those cars will hit it and ruin it. I climbed the fence and crossed the road. Hello, little Rose. No, don't be frightened. I'm just going to pick you and take you home and plant you in a safe little pot, away from all the dirt and the raging winds and these mean old drunken drivers. jumped back over the fence again and I was walking back across the field with the rose in my hand when suddenly some grouchy gruffy old farmer came roaring along on his tractor hey hey you um y y yes imagine that she says I can't use this road anymore but this land belongs to you now well funny things do happen Somehow, I knew he was referring to Mum, who was up in the house. We own the place now, but I didn't want to make him any madder, so I walked on up to the ranch house, sort of, sort of chuckling and happy about it, thinking how the ranch was ours now. there, honey? Well, it's a rose, and I need a pot or something to put it in. Oh, isn't it pretty? I think there's a pot in the backyard. Let me see the rose. Wow, it's beautiful. It's yellow and red. 
Here's a pot. Now, let's give it some water. Look, isn't that nice? Yes, that's nice. Wow, it's beautiful. What was that old farmer fussing about, Mum? Oh, he was roaring along our little driveway here, and I told him to please not use it anymore, that this is our property now. And he roared off in a huff, muttering to himself about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, funny things do happen. I sat there looking at the rose right in the middle of the flower pot, and I was just thinking how pleased I was that we had this nice ranch now and that I'd saved this pretty rose. The rose was hanging over the road, kind of frightened, even scared of me when I picked it. But when I got it home, all nice and cozy in the pot, it seemed to be very contented and happy. I brought you home and set you in the wee-wee pot Planted you safely whether you wanted it or not Otherwise, you would have suffered a lot If you'd stayed on that dangerous spot I took you home with me And cared for you I took you home soul along the highway that needs to be rescued from the dirt, the raging winds, and the mean old drunken drivers, rescued by love. by Simon Peter, the farmer was played by Solomon, the mother by Topaz, and the children were Dick and Heidi and Coa Spencer. The Rose theme was composed and arranged by Paul Michael, and the Rose song composed by Singing Sam, and arranged, played, and sung by Jeremy Spencer. The musicians were Paul Michael on rhythm guitar, Michael Fogarty on piano and synthesizer, Solomon on percussion, Sabina on recorder and violin, and the bass was played by John Notes, who was also the sound engineer. The play was produced by Simon Peter from a script adaptation by Christopher John from the original story told by Father David. We would like to invite you also to join the International Music with Meaning Club and get a free Music with Meaning magazine by writing to us at our address, which is the Music with Meaning Club, CPO 220, Athens in Greece. Again, that's the Music with Meaning Club, CPO 220, Athens in Greece.
Music with Meaning presents I'm a Live One. Jackson. Old Sam had worked hard all his life on the big cotton plantation. His mother and father had been slaves on this same plantation, but since the Civil War, no one was called a slave anymore. Old Sam worked hard all his life on the big old cotton plantation. His mother and his father had been slaves, but since the Civil War, slave anymore, yet the poor still had to keep on working for the rich. When Sam was younger, he had worked out in the cotton fields, but now he was getting old. His wife had gone to be with the Lord, and all he had to do was look after his master. Sam? Yes, Master Jackson? Would you mind to bring me some wine? Yes, Master Jackson. The wine. Thank you, Sam. Will there be anything else, Master? I forgot. Uh, would you bring me my cigars, please? Yes, Mr. Jackson. Your cigars. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. It's one of these evenings where you just want to look out the window and dream, isn't it, Sam? Sure is one of them evenings, Master. Sure is one of them evenings. Sam's life. younger than Sam, his life had been easy. He liked old Sam, but he could never understand Sam's faith. He admired old Sam's strong faith, but it seemed to him that Sam had more problems than he did. That was one thing that Master Jackson could not understand. How come, Sam? How come you're a Christian, yet you have all these troubles and trials and tribulations? Hey, I don't even believe in God and Yet I have everything that a man can think of. Riches, fun, a nice home, and I'm a free, wealthy man. I don't have nearly as many troubles as you do. Well, I, I don't rather know the answer to your question, boss. I guess I'll have to think for a while before I can answer that one. Old Sam said I'll have to think for a while before I can answer that one. But there must be a reason why old Sam so many troubles, and Master Jackson had the fun. Oh, what a wonderful morning, Sam. Bring him a morning tea, please. And my breakfast, too, please. Yes, Dr. Jackson. I'll be right back. What a day, blue sky, sunshine. Your tea, Master. The breakfast will be ready in just a few minutes. Sam, Sam, did you hear that? Did I hear what, Master Jackson? Didn't you hear that? Outside the window. Master Jackson, I don't hear nothing but ducks. Tonight we're going to have roast ducks, Sam. Quick, let's forget the breakfast. Get my boots and gun. We're going to hunt. <laughs> This is a good place. Well, it sure is, Master. Hide here behind this tree, Sam. Yes, Master. Behind this tree, I'll hide. They're coming. They're coming. I can see them, Shh. Master. Sam. I'm sorry, Master. I mean, yes, Master. Go after them, Sam. Quick. Wait, boss. I'm going. Bag the live ones. Bag the live ones. Leave the dead ones. Lay. Yes, some of the ducks were dead, but some only wounded. And Master Jackson knew that wounded ducks could still get up and fly away if someone didn't grab them quick. 
That's why he sent Sam to go after the live ones first. Back the live ones, back the live ones. Leave the dead ones lay. When old Sam returned with the ducks in his bag, he looked at his rich master with a big smile on his face. What's so funny, Sam? Why are you laughing? Oh, master, master, I think I got the answer to your question. Now, you see, I'm a live one. The devil is afraid I'm going to get away, so he tries to bag me first. Master Jackson, you're a dead one. He's already got you. He's not a bit worried about you. But the devil wants me to stop serving and trusting the Lord. And that is why he gives me more troubles than you. I think I got the answer to your question, boss. You see, I'm a live one. The devil's afraid I'm going to get away, so he tries to bag me first. But, boss, you're a dead one. The devil's already got you. And he's not a bit worried about what you're going to do. I think I got the answer to your question, boss. You see, I'm a live one. The devil's afraid I'm going to get away, so he tries to bag me first. If he wants me to stop serving the Lord, so he gives him more trouble than you. Cause he's worried I'm going to get away, and he's afraid what I might do. Children, if you're going to serve the Lord, be alive one too. If you're going to be ready for troubles and trials, the devil's going to throw at you. So keep on fighting the fight of faith, doing the best you can. Then you'll be alive one too, just like dear old Sam. Yes, Christians may have many battles, but their rewards are very great. Count your blessings and resist the enemy so he will flee from you. And if you keep fighting the good fight of faith, you'll keep winning and you'll be a live one like dear old Sam. Children of you are going to serve the Lord, be a live one too. You've got to be ready for troubles and trials the devil's going to throw at you. So keep on fighting the fight of faith, doing the best you can. Then you'll be a live one too, just like dear old Sam. In I'm a Live One, Master Jackson was played by Jeremiah Russell and the narrator and Old Sam by Simon Peter. The music was composed and arranged by Paul Michael, who also played the rhythm guitar, accompanied by Sabina on violin, Michael Fogarty on piano and accordion, Solomon on drums, and the bass was played by John Notes, who was also the sound engineer. On vocals, you heard Paul Michael, John Notes, Michael Fogarty, Topaz, Heidi Dicken, and Coa Spencer. I'm a Live One was produced by Simon Simon Peter and scripted by Christopher John from the original story as told by Father David. Please write to us at CPO 220 Athens, Greece, which is the address of our International Music with Meaning Club. We'd like to send you a free copy of our Music with Meaning magazine. So write today to CPO 220 Athens, Greece. Music with Meaning presents The Shepherd's Crook. Now you may think this a weird story, but it's true, because it happened to us late one night on the London Underground. While waiting for the train, we had noticed this very strange man eyeing us oddly several times before boarding. <laughs> Honey, do you see that strange man staring at us? <laughs> yes, Maria, and he's got really unpleasant vibes. I can only think that he's bent on annoying us. <laughs> Here comes the train. Come on, Maria, quick. Let's get into this empty car. Your discernment was right. Look, he's following us. 
<laughs> With all the other places to sit in an almost empty train, he had chosen our car and the seat directly in front of and facing us. And if you're familiar with the small, quiet London subway cars, this meant literally knee to knee. <laughs> David, we've been sitting here five minutes. Now why is the train not moving? I don't know. Oh, look, here comes the conductor now. Come on, Bill, these people have got to get home. You can't just leave them sitting here. Well, let them walk or catch a cab. But it's only a couple more stops to the terminal. Couldn't care less, mate. Union says a knock-off at midnight, so that's it. I'm going home. You have to find another operator. And so we were left, sitting helplessly, with Mr. Spook sitting eyeball to eyeball with us, leering at us tauntingly. <laughs> and grinning like a Cheshire cat. <laughs> now, this subterranean denizen of the deep was trying to hypnotize me and prove his powers. You're a teacher, aren't you? Why, yes. Yes, I am. How did you know? I'm a psychologist. <laughs> this guy gives me the chills. Maria, the devil is up to something, I know not what, but I certainly don't feel like hanging around to find out much longer. Yes, let's get out of here. No, because that's when a dog usually bites you, when you turn tail and flee. We need to stand our ground and pray and ask the Lord for instructions. I've never run up against a situation of the like of this before. <laughs> Amen, Lord, in Jesus' name, what shall we do? Of course, I got an immediate answer to my prayer, but a very surprising one. My attention was immediately drawn to the hooked handle of my umbrella. And it came to me that it was similar to a shepherd's crook or staff used in ages past as an exorcist's symbol, a rod of authority, symbolizing the power of the great shepherd and his staff to resist and bind the devil and drive away evil. <laughs> and at this moment I was impressed to look him straight in the eye and raise the umbrella a couple of inches from the floor between me and him and with a silent exorcist prayer in my heart bring the umbrella down with a firm sharp thud resist the enemy in jesus name look <laughs> with that look and prayer and at the sound of the thud of my improvised shepherd's staff our tormentor's grin faded he grew pale rose hastily from his seat and dashed out of the car as though the hounds of heaven were on his trail. It worked! Yes, honey. Or at least, God worked. We were thrilled at the silent power of God. Since then, I've seldom failed to carry either an umbrella or a cane with me wherever I go, just in case I should ever again meet the devil face to face. On the underground, a plane, a boat, or the street. If someday, perchance, the devil you meet, say a prayer and ask the Lord to send him away. Resist the devil in Jesus' name. Shopping in the store or just taking a walk. Talking with someone in the park. Under the wings of the Lord you'll be safe Resist the devil in Jesus' name With a look and a prayer And at the sound of the thud Of the improvised shepherd's staff The devil grew pale Arose from his seat And out the door he dashed On the underground a plane A boat or the street If someday perchance The devil you meet Say a prayer and ask the Lord to send him away Resist the devil in Jesus' name Shopping in the store or just taking a walk Talking with someone in the park Under the wings of the Lord you'll be safe Resist the devil in Jesus' name With the look and a prayer and at the sound of the thud Of the improvised shepherd's staff The devil grew pale rose from his seat and out the door he dashed resist the devil in Jesus name Stay.
Shepherd's Crook was narrated by Simon Peter, Maria was played by Joan, and Mr. Spook by Paul Michael. The foreman was Tracy Alexander, and Bill was played by Solomon Touchstone. The song was composed and arranged by Paul Michael, who also played the rhythm guitar. John Notes played the bass, Solomon drums, and Michael Fogarty piano and synthesizer. On the vocals, you heard the voices of Paul Michael, John Notes, Michael Fogarty, and the children Dickin, Heidi, Coa, and Celeste. The play was sound engineered by John Notes and produced and scripted by Simon Peter from the original story told by Father David. If you'd like to hear more from Music With Meaning, then please write to us at our address, which is The Music With Meaning Club, CPO 220 Athens, Greece. Again, that's The Music With Meaning Club, CPO 220 Athens, in Greece.